the, 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 I'm trying to take you to a place of milk and honey. I'm trying to take you to a place where, where, where the grapes are, are, are first ripe, where, where they induce seeds. And I'm trying to take you to a place where you can be able to inhabit yourselves. I'm trying to take you to a place that's rich and ripe. Thomas A. Burkeen, a native of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area, didn't have an easy path to the ministry before he was saved. I was kind of a wild dude. Um, not to the point where I was doing illegal stuff. Um, well, no, I was doing some illegal drinking before uh, 21, but um, I got heavy into alcohol, probably started at the age of 16. Just really got into just going to the clubs, go-go's, uh, just a lot of stuff that a you know, typical teenager, somebody going into their 20s would do. But during this time, as a young man, a significant event happened in his life to question his true purpose. It all started when my father died back in 2000. Uh, he, he died on Thanksgiving Day um, 2000. Uh, my father taught me a lot. He taught me how to be a man. He taught me how to be a man of a household and to take care of family. So, you know, when I, when I, when I first initially lost him, I felt like, you know, I, I had lost a lot. But kind of at that time when my father died, that's when I first heard from the Lord um, clearly. And God was saying that, you know what, your father was here to teach you how to be a man. He showed you the example. And from then I had to start being self-sufficient. You know, I had to start doing a lot of things on my own. Um, even at the age of 20, you know, my father did everything for us, for my family. So I had to start learning to be self-sufficient and I'm um, doing for my mom. That's where it really started. Um, the transformation took place. During this transitional stage of his life, Thomas Brickeen found a greater calling a call to minister to the youth. Um, I wasn't surprised because I was kind of seeing the transition of um, his attitude and the way he socialized with folks. So I didn't find that to be surprising, but I was very proud of him. You got to know Thomas before he became a minister. I mean, to know him, you just would have never thought that. I never would have thought that. Uh, my home church that I came from really didn't have a lot of youth programs and um, I thought that was lacking. And then about a year and a half um, into ministry, I got a phone call from my current church at Gospel Church. And the guy was like, I want you to come over and uh, be my uh, youth pastor. And it was just like so crazy because just a few months before I was like, you know, Lord, I, I want you to just send me an opportunity to be able to work with you, you know, in a way that you want me to do it. Because I always knew God had, uh, had called me to do radical ministry. You know, I wasn't going to be like the typical minister, you know, um, because I just feel like I wasn't going to be the status quo preacher or the status quo minister. You know, I'm different and, you know, I'm peculiar, I'm unique. So. I'm sorry, can I be real this morning? I'm sorry, Pastor Allen, I'm getting back to my rebellious, radical preacher nature. I, I, some of us just come to take attendance on Sunday morning because we're infatuated with the idea of heaven. But I knew I needed to reach the youth in a different way. So um, when I got that call, I just had to accept it, you know, and I knew that was God answering my prayer. With his unique and radical approach to ministry, Minister Brickeen found a church home that shared his ideas and views, Gospel Church. Now when I get up to preach at times, I don't, some things that, I, that I'm able to say in the pulpit, you know, I don't, I don't have to worry about offending anybody. I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, am I going to get pulled in the office later? You know, um, I have a lot of freedom. Um, and, and, and it's to a certain extent, but, um, because you know, you want to make sure that you're saying and doing things according to the Word of God. You know, it's not going to be anything that I'm going to do that's going to compromise that. But it was just so much freedom to be myself. Number two, it's going to take two things. Number one, everybody stepping up, doing your part spiritually and participating. And number two is being respectful to adults. Like I said, you know, and I may sound like I'm being petty saying that, but 
if you can't respect an adult to ask you to spit out gum, how you expect to do what God wants you to do? Amen. But dealing with the youth is no easy task. It's rewarding as well as frustrating. Um, sometimes you just want to literally wrap your hands around them sometimes, but, um, but, you, but, but it's rewarding because um, you know genuinely that they love you. So that's, that's my mentor, so like we talk on the phone and whatnot, I call them every week, and we just talk about what's going on in life, my problems and whatnot. Before at our own church, we never had like a youth minister, but it's really different because we have somebody to like show us new things and take us new places and stuff. He actually believes in all the teams. Part of connecting with the youth is understanding their issues, and Minister Burkeen conveys that understanding through his sermons. 90% of my sermon titles are either movie titles or song titles that I kind of rearrange. Like my last sermon I preached was, um, Jesus, I want to have swagger like you. For the contemporary crowd, the subject will be, Jesus, I want some swagger like you. Or well, I preached, um, you might get rich, but you'll die trying. Or you know, I'll, I'll preach something a little catchy. Um, I preach the sermon, walk it out, you know, something they be like, oh, you know, as soon as you say the title, they like, oh, you know, because it's something that they can relate to. He just comes out real. Um, a lot of times he says stuff, you know, to make you laugh so that you're not, not bored because some people can just talk on and on and you really not get anything out of it. So, you know, he wants the people to be interested. Creating programs and keeping the youth active and involved is Minister Brekeen's main priority. Um, right now we're working on, uh, we're putting together a mentoring program uh, through the church. We're trying to connect um, older adults with a young adult with a teenager um, to kind of bridge the gap. Ladies circle, they assign mentors to some of the mentees that didn't have mentors. So she kind of addressed the whole situation about, you know, just you need to call your mentor just as well as they're calling you and also that your mentor is not, you know, they're not a, basically they're not an ATM. We're kind of doing everything, you know, we, we have our Keep It Real Friday event that we do every month that's getting bigger and bigger. We started out with um, about 10 to 15 people when we first started a year ago. Now we're averaging three to 400 youth every month coming into the Keep It Real Friday event. With everything Minister Brickeen has done to improve lives of youth and young adults, he has one ultimate goal. God has called me the pastor. Um, originally, right now, God gave me a five-year plan for this ministry. I'm in year four. Um, God spoke that to me when I first came to the church. I don't really know what's going to happen after year five. I think he's gonna do great things for the community. I see him being a pastor of a church one day. Um, and like I said, just taking the youth and moving them to another, another level. I wanna right now, I wanna to continue to see my ministry grow. And when God releases me, um, you know, in the near future, then, you know, whatever the endless possibilities could be, I'm all for it. He'll accomplish changing lives. Dealing with the youth is, is a very difficult and challenging thing to do um, with the youth of today. And I really do know that he'll, he'll do great with that. Um, I want to continue to develop programs for the youth. I uh, want to get more involved in the community, get more youth into the church, get more young adults into the church. Those are the short-term goals. But I know long-term God has called me to pastor. Um, later on down the road, once my pastor retires, he's already said that. Um, he looks to me to be the successor to the church, and which is an honor. Um, I, I know that no matter how long it takes to get to my long-term goal, I know that uh, one day I'll be able to be a pastor of my own church. But whatever God's plan is, you know, whether it's at my church or starting a church or going to another church, I'm all for it. But I know God's ultimate plan is for me to pastor. God loves our best efforts. God loves it when we do things to please Him. God loves it when we are obedient children. In that land of milk and honey that God has prepared for us, it can be ours.
but it's up to us. Amen.